Welcome to the Calculus AB video for skill number 143. I can employ implicit differentiation to find derivatives of implicitly defined functions. And in the last video, we learned that at the top of a capital, we have this space here that is called the abacus, which is also a ancient mathematical calculator. The trivia question is what is this next piece down in the capital called? It is also a name for a certain variety of sea urchins. So oftentimes we are given functions which are not defined explicitly, and maybe we don't know the term explicit, but basically it's a function that is directly written as the output is equal to some function of the input. Uh, or perhaps it's like y equals, or maybe it's an equation that can be solved for one of the variables. So explicit functions, we can solve for one of the variable. However, with an implicit function, often the case is it's not really possible to set the equation up so that it is in uh, y equals format, or even x equals format. They're oftentimes convoluted with x's and y's being multiplied and the variables existing on both sides of the equation. And so what we need to do is develop a way to find the derivative of these functions or these uh, implicitly defined functions. So this skill is about learning how to do that. And in order to do that we will need to use the chain rule. So a quick review, the derivative the chain rule says if you want to take the derivative of something like this, you multiply the derivative of f times the derivative of what's inside. So we will use that. Let's take a look at an example. All right, so here we have a pretty straightforward example. x squared plus y squared equals 10y, and we're being asked to find the derivative of y with respect to x. And what we do is we, since we're finding the derivative, we're going to differentiate each piece with respect to x. So the derivative of x squared with respect to x, the derivative of y squared with respect to x, and the derivative of 10y with respect to x. So the derivative of x squared we know is 2x, and this is kind of where the chain rule comes in. This isn't terribly important, but the derivative of x with respect to x is dx dx. And we've never bothered writing that because that just equals 1. Um, but in truth, you could argue that's there. It becomes more evident when we take the derivative of y squared. So the derivative of y is 2y. Sorry, the derivative of y squared is 2y. And then since y is a function of x, we're going to have to apply the chain rule and take the derivative of the inside. So the red circle is the derivative of the outside, function squared. And then dy dx is the derivative of y with respect to x. Then we take the derivative of 10y with respect to x, and the derivative of 10y is 10 times the derivative of y. So in essence, one could argue that you're basically taking derivatives as per usual, but every time you take a derivative of a y term, you have to remember that you also have to tack on the derivative of y with respect to x. If we simplify all of the, that out, we get 2x plus 2y dy dx equals 10 dy dx. And we are trying to solve for dy dx. So what that means is we can move the dy dx terms to one side of the equation. So I subtracted 2y from both sides, 2y dy dx. And then I factored a dy dx out of the right-hand side of the equation. And that gave me dy dx times 10 minus 2y. 
And since I'm trying to solve for that, dy dx, I can divide both sides by 10 minus 2y and arrive at my answer. So with a few more examples, we should get pretty comfortable with this. In the end, very often it factors very nicely uh, with these straightforward problems. So let's take a look at another example. Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the ellipse 3x squared plus 4y squared equals 2x at 1 half comma negative 1 fourth. And if we're going to be finding the tangent line equation, the first thing we need to do is be find the slope of the tangent line. And we can find the slope of the tangent line by taking the derivative of the implicitly defined function. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. The derivative of 4y squared is 8y dy dx. There's that chain rule again. And the derivative of 2x is 2. If I solve for dy dx, I subtract 6x from both sides, and then I divide both sides by 8y, and I get my dy dx, which helps us find the slope. In order to find the slope, we need to evaluate it at the given point. So in this case, we need both the x and y coordinates. So we're going to take our dy dx and plug in both the points. So we get 2 minus 6 times 1 half all over 8 times negative 1 fourth. And if you simplify that down, we have 1 half. So with this ellipse, at this location, our tangent line would have a slope of 1 half. From there, it's a matter of just taking the point and the slope and plugging it into the point-slope form. So there we go again with the point-slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So our y1 is negative 1 fourth, our m is 1 half, and our x1 is one half as well. All right, so one last problem with implicit differentiation. The only thing different with this one is I'm going to find the first derivative and then also find the second derivative. So what we have here is y squared minus x squared equals five. We take the derivative of y squared and we get 2y dy dx, we take the derivative of x squared and we get 2x, and we take the derivative of 5 and we get 0. Solving for dy dx, and by the way, you might have noticed I've instead of writing dy dx, I write y prime. That's acceptable as long as we know that we're differentiating with respect to x. 2y y prime equals 2x, and solving for y prime, we get 2x over 2y, or simplified just x over y. When we're asked to find the second derivative, what we're asking is find the derivative of y prime. So if y prime is x over y, and I want to take the derivative of that, I'm going to need to use the quotient rule, because I've got a quotient. So the derivative of the left side would become y double prime. And the derivative of the right side, we need to do low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below. So the derivative of x times y minus x times the derivative of y all over y squared. Now this dy dx right here in this equation, we already know what that is. So rather than writing dy dx, I'm going to write it as x over y. And then everything down here in the bottom row is a matter of going through the process of simplifying it. So in the first step, I combined my two fractions, or x times x minus x over y into that. Then I simplified the numerator into a single fraction, 
and then I took the whole fraction and simplified it into one fraction. And then I noticed y squared minus x squared is what we originally started with, which had a value of 5. So I wrote in 5. In truth, on the AP test, if you stopped right here, you would probably be fine. However, I suspect that this sort of question would be a multiple choice question, and one of the answers would probably be more along the lines of one of my final two things. So it's good to practice our simplifying. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully now you should be able to do implicit differentiation, which would be differentiation of functions that are implicitly defined. The trivia question for the day was, what is this piece of the capital called, the, the space directly below the abacus? And it is, if I can move that, an echinus, echinus, another name for a type of sea urchin. This is my drawing of a sea urchin. Doesn't it look like a sea urchin? All right, thanks for watching.